Last week, we introduced homogeneous composition and coercion, which we collectively called Kahn operations after the mathematician Daniel Kahn. We want to check why all the types we have seen so far support the Kahn operations. Before moving on, I want to apologize for the mistake I made last week about the empty type. We will discuss its correct Kahn operations today. Let's start with the homogeneous composition of functions. You have a box of functions, and you want to compose them to get a new function at i equals to 1. By function extensionality, we should focus on its input-output behavior. Suppose the input is x at i equals to 1, depicted as the dashed line on the ground. The first step is to consider the degenerate square on the ground that is essentially the line x. It's degenerate because it's constant in dimension i. The second step is to apply the box of functions to the degenerate square to get a box in the cloud. We then compose the box in the cloud to get a line at i equals to 1, which will be the value of the function of x. The critical step is to construct a square on the ground in order to compose a box in the cloud. You need to know the type of the entire cube to compose any box because composition is type dependent. The simplest way to make a square out of a line is to fill the square uniformly with the input x as we did. So you can see that we go back along dimension i on the ground to create a square and then move forward in the cloud to construct the value of the function. Now it's probably a good time to pause the video. Next, let's take a look at the coercion of a function. So you have some function at i equals to 0 and want to create a new function at i equals to 1. Again, we should consider its input-output behavior. The input x will be at i equals 1. We can use the coercion on the ground to get a line x prime at i equals to 0, apply the function at i equals to 0, and then coerce the result in the cloud back to i equals to 1. We again need a square on the ground to coerce the result in the cloud because both composition and coercion are type dependent. You should check that the parts imposed by the phi are kept constant along the dimension i. Alright, you might wonder how we can define such a filler in the opposite direction. You already learned everything you need for the construction. Let's discuss this filler later. Next is the composition in the pair types. Intuitively, the composition of a pair is the pair of compositions. The subtlety here is that, once again, we need a square on the ground. Because the ground square is changing along the dimension i, the type in the cloud is also changing. And thus, we need heterogeneous composition, the composition without the letter h. Now, the coercion. The coercion of pairs is again the pair of coerced components. We still need a square on the ground to coerce the second component. Okay, you might want to pause the video again. We have seen various derived operations. They are all definable from hcomp and transp. We will not discuss them today, but these are perfect exercises. So, we have done the unit type, the function types, and the pair types. More types are coming. The composition in the path type can be implemented by the composition in the underlying type. The only thing you have to worry about is the boundaries of the coerced path. You need to make sure the coercion of a path from m to n is still a path from m to n. To achieve this, we add two new faces to lock up the endpoints. The coercion in a path type 
follows the same idea to lock out the endpoints. We need heterogeneous composition because the type A in the coercion might depend on the dimension I. Now we have all the negative types done. You can implement the count operations without adding any new elements to these types. We will see that things will change for the positive types. Let's start with the coercion of natural numbers first. It turns out that we can just use the starting element. Whew, that is easy. However, its homogeneous composition is challenging. We cannot use M because the phase N might not be constant. A priori, we do not have a good choice. Cubical type theory solves this by recognizing irreducible compositions as new elements in the natural number type. This trick applies to every positive type. We add enough formal compositions until we have a solution to every composition problem. So, technically speaking, the natural number type now has three constructors, the zero, the successor, and the formal H comp. You should now worry about harmony as we are enabling new ways to construct elements. We restore the harmony by teaching the enumerator how to handle these formal compositions. The idea is to map each part of the box into the code domain and redo the composition there. Here is the formal equality. Note that we need heterogeneous composition in the code domain because the type might depend on the dimension i there. In sum, the most crucial change to the inductive types in cubical type theory is to add formal homogeneous compositions and make eliminators commute with them. This applies to the empty type, the natural number type, the Boolean type, destroying sums, the circle, etc. How about the coercion operator? It turns out that we can always define the coercion operation without introducing extra elements unless we are dealing with indexed inductive families. As we discussed earlier, you cannot characterize an indexed inductive family by its instances. You can only define the entire family at the same time, including the coercion between the fibers. To make sure there is always a solution to the coercion problem, we might need formal coercion similar to formal compositions we introduced. Index inductive families are an advanced topic beyond the scope of this course, and cubical agita does not support them yet. For parameterized inductive types such as destroying sums A plus B, we do not need formal coercion. We already saw how coercion can be done for the natural number type. Let's check how it works in disjoint sums. You push the coercion inside the constructors in a suitable manner, depending on how the parameter types are involved. There's one more thing I want to bring up about inductively defined types. You can also make the H comp commute with the constructors. That is, you can push a constructor inside the H comp so that it applies to each component of the box. For example, you can push the successor constructor inside a composition in the natural number type or the in left and in right constructors inside a composition in the disjoint sum type. These rules are optional, but cubical acta has these rules. Let's review our progress so far. We have covered almost every type except the universes, which are the most difficult. See you next week.